So Samsung fans are no doubt waiting with ever so slightly moist trousers for next week's big Galaxy Unpacked event to reveal a whole heap of new flippy, bendy smartphones and all that good stuff. But for anyone who doesn't have a spare bladder to sell to finance their next smartphone, well, this is always a potential alternative. It's the Samsung Galaxy M32, and I just grabbed one fresh from Amazon today for 269 quid. But despite that budget-friendly price, you do get some clever features and specs packed into the Samsung Galaxy M32, including a 90 hertz Super AMOLED display and a 64 megapixel primary camera, although it doesn't offer 5G support like many budget rivals. So let's whip the Samsung Galaxy M32 and out of the box, take on a full-on tour of the hardware and the software, show you what the gaming chops are like, the camera tech, all that good stuff. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Okay, so let's see what we actually get in the box. And of course, you do have one Samsung Galaxy M32. One adaptive fast charging plug with hilarious pop-up action. There's one decidedly short Type-C USB cable. And you've got a bit of porky pin action. And that's basically it, besides the usual boring leaflety stuff. As usual, no protective case or anything, so that's a bit of a shame. So let's turn our attention to the actual smartphone, the Galaxy M32, and it's certainly got a decent little heft to it, uh, that's for sure. Up front, you've got a Gorilla Glass 5 display. That's pretty damn good. That should hopefully prove scratch-resistant over time. Although, sadly, there's no pre-installed screen protector, just for an extra bit of protection on there. Meanwhile, around the back end and the sides as well, you've got a plastic frame. It's certainly quite a jazzy disco-style design on the back end of the Samsung Galaxy M32, though. Certainly looks a Lot better in real life than it did on the pictures on the Samsung and the Amazon websites. This is the blue model, but you can also grab it in white or black. There's actually a smooth back here on the Galaxy M32 as well. I was expecting more of a textured back end, again from those promotional photos. And touch wood, that blue finish seems to be hiding the worst of the greasy, smudgy prints where I've been fondling the Galaxy M32 as well, although you'll have to give it the occasional buffing, no doubt, to keep it looking pristine. No water uh, resistance or even splash resistance, sadly, according to the Galaxy M32 two specs. Now you do get an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor housed there just beneath the volume rocker. On the other side you've got the SIM tray and then down below you've got the Type-C USB port and alongside that a headphone jack. Hallelujah. Now let's just crack open that SIM tray as well and see exactly what we're working with here. And it's definitely great news because not only do you have space for two SIM cards at the same time, but you've also got a separate slot there for your micro SD memory cards to expand the onboard storage. Right, so that's the design, a quick run through. Let's have a, a bit of a boot up of the Galaxy M32, get it all set up, and then I'll take you on a tour of the rest of the hardware and software. All right, so that there are Samsung Galaxy M32 all set up and good to go. And no real surprises on the software front. If you've used any Samsung smartphone of any description in recent times, it's once again Android 11 with a good bit of One UI 3.1 slathered on top. This does add in quite a lot of bonus features on top of Android, including a buttload of Samsung uh, specific apps and features as well, which you can find most of them by diving into the apps tray. Pretty much if Google has an app on Android, well, Samsung is basically replicated. So you've got an internet browser, you've got your own app store, Samsung Pay, Samsung Health, got a bit of smart home action as well. So, you know, basically take your pick. Do you want to go Google or do you want to go Samsung? And yeah, you do get some bollocks like Facebook, unfortunately, pre-installed, but it's easy enough to get rid of. Just long press, hit uninstall and off it f***. Because you've got the usual Android features like split screen multitasking, you've got the gesture navigation, you've also got the likes of the edge panels from Samsung, which just allows you to quickly and easily access your favorite apps and features. And plenty of built-in customization as well by the likes of uh, Galaxy themes. Uh, if you dive on into the home screen, you've got some more customization you can do there to the likes of the, uh, the home screen grid. And I really like the gesture support that you get on Galaxy smartphones as well, including a bit of one-handed mode action. If you just drag down at the bottom edge like so, as you can see there, you can shrink it down the display make it much easier to use one-handed. Lots of motion and gesture support, including the likes of raise to wake, and you can also double tap that power key in order to quick launch the camera. And because the Samsung Galaxy M32 sports an AMOLED display, you do get an always on display option as well, which you can have shown during a set schedule. Loads of different clock options for this as well. So you can pick one that uh, particularly suits you, be it analog, digital, whatever you want. You've also got some calendar options if you want to stay organized. And then as you can see there, while your phone's hibernating, it shows up below the date and the time, how much battery life you've got left, and if you've got any notifications waiting for a bit of attention. So yeah, bugger loads of bonus features thrown onto the Galaxy M32 and Android in general, 
buy Samsung courtesy of that One UI. And I haven't even begun to touch on the likes of the Samsung Knox security as well, which just helps to really keep your privates private by encrypting all of your important data, your passwords, etc. And of course, you've got that edge-mounted fingerprint sensor, which touch wood so far seems like a good one. Pretty quick to react, as you can see there. And nice and responsive. Seems very rare to get a uh, finger not recognized message. The power button is quite clicky though, which I guess is just down to overall build quality. And if your fingers are otherwise engaged, so to speak, and you uh, don't happen to be rocking a massive old face mask or anything, you do have the face recognition support here on the Galaxy M32. And this seems, uh, again, pretty responsive, apart from on that occasion when I'm actually trying to demonstrate it, of course, but usually you're in within a second or so. And when you come to purchase your Samsung Galaxy M32, you've got a choice of 64 or 128 gigs of storage. You do have that micro SD expandability as backup as well. So now let's chat display tech. And that 6.4 inch Super AMOLED panel on the Samsung Galaxy M32 is undoubtedly one of the best you'll find at this sort of price point. A lot of rivals do offer IPS instead of AMOLED. That AMOLED tech means you get nice punchy vivid colors on the default display settings. You can dial them down a bit if that's not your bag. You get nice sharp contrast as well, really deep blacks. Sadly, that Galaxy M32 panel doesn't seem to offer full HDR support for the likes of Netflix uh, and other streaming services, uh, but still the contrast is strong. Those visuals do look very luscious indeed. And you've got full HD plus resolution, 2400 by 1080 pixels. So that keeps everything nice and crisp because it's not an absolutely massive display. Viewing angles are good and it can hit around sort of 800 nits brightness on the top level. So absolutely fine for outdoor visibility, even on a fairly sunny day. And uh, the Samsung Galaxy M32 sports a very cute little nipple notch up at the top end as well. It's been a while since I've seen one of these. Usually, of course, it's a little selfie orifice that's uh, sort of separated from those bezels. Thankfully, it doesn't intrude too much into the action when you do decide to go full screen. All of the display settings you would hope for are basically present and correct, including, as I mentioned before, the ability to tinker with the color output got eye comfort modes, all of that good stuff. And if you tap into motion smoothness as well, you'll see that it is a 90 hertz refresh rate. Uh, you can bump it back down to 60 hertz if you want to save on the battery life, but I really like that 90 hertz finish, just makes everything silky smooth. What about the audio? Well, sadly, it's not a stereo speaker setup here on the Galaxy M32, just a mono speaker housed here on the bottom edge, boo hiss. But let's bump up the volume, see what we've got. Thankfully, you do at least get a generous choice for either 128 or 256 gigs of UFO. So you know what, for a mono speaker setup, that's absolutely fine, as long as you don't accidentally smother that speaker grill with your palm or uh, fleshy fingers, then it's all good on that top volume, nice and loud, clarity is reasonably good as well. And of course you do have that 3.5mm headphone jack if you want to get plugged in, enjoy a good bit of high-res audio, otherwise you've also got Bluetooth 5.0 support if you want to go wireless. Now, performance is one area where the Samsung Galaxy M32 certainly struggles a bit compared with a lot of rivals around this price point. Where you've got running the show as a MediaTek Helio G80 chipset, also found in Samsung's Galaxy A32. Quite a basic chipset, quite energy efficient as well, but you don't get any 5G support. And as you can see from those Geekbench scores, not quite as strong as, uh, for instance, the likes of a Poco smartphone or a Realme around this price. So for instance, if you go check out my Poco X3 GT unboxing, costs a similar sort of amount to the Galaxy. The M32. It also uses a MediaTek chipset, but this time the Dimensity 1100. You got that 5G support and much stronger scores than this. But of course, benchmarking is benchmarking. You know, you can take it or leave it. The everyday experience is still fine. You will see some judders here and there as you are flicking through, which is a shame because obviously you got that 90 hertz finish, so it's not always as silky smooth as I'd hope. But you know, you can run any app that you want to on here. You're not going to be waiting ages for them to load up. You will find that they do tend to shut down in the background reasonably often, and uh, there is occasionally a little pause while you're waiting for something to power up. And this is the 6 gig model. I believe there is an 8 gig of RAM uh, SKU available elsewhere as well, but I didn't find it on Amazon. So yeah, everyday shenanigans fine. What I'm going to do to really test out the Galaxy M32 now is a good bit of Call of Duty action. And when you are playing a game like Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, whatever, you can load up Samsung's Game Booster at all. It's a bit awkward. You have to drag down the notifications bar and tap like so. And this gives you access to a small selection of really good features, including you can record your uh, your gameplay if you want to you know, upload it for later or whatever. You can keep an eye on the, uh, the temperature and your resources on here as well. And you've also got the excellent priority 
priority mode, which basically blocks notifications and keeps you focused on whatever you're doing. Now I've jumped on into the game settings menu here on Call of Duty Mobile, and you're already starting to see the limitations of that MediaTek Helio G80 chipset. Because as you can see, you can only max out the graphics at medium level, very low indeed, and frame rate at high, not very high. You don't have any of those options. But anywho, let's jump on into a match and see if I actually stand a fighting chance. Yeah, I'd say if you want to do a bit of light gaming, the Galaxy M32 is definitely up to it, even though I had to have the graphics settings scaled back. Um, my Call of Duty mobile sessions ran pretty smoothly, a couple of little judders and shakes here and there, but overall definitely very playable. Screen responsiveness is absolutely fine. The detail levels aren't so bad that you can't see anything coming at you until it's like two foot away. Uh, I did get my ass handed to me time and time again, but that's mostly because I just suck at games. So overall, yeah, not bad. As far as that battery tech goes, no worries whatsoever. The Samsung Galaxy M32 sports a 5,000 milliamp battery. Definitely a good capacious one right there. And the good news is I started the day with 75% battery. It's only down to 63% after a good couple of hours of, you know, media streaming, uh, messing around with all the various settings, bit of Call of Duty action as well. So it seems like it'll keep you going all day long, even with pretty intensive use. And that's not just down to the fact that the Galaxy M32 has a bloody massive battery, it's also that energy efficient MediaTek chipset. As for charging it back up again, well it's 25 watt adaptive fast charging, not particularly fast, a lot of rivals now offer at least 33 watt, but uh, it'll do the job absolutely fine. And let's finish up with a squint at that quad lens rear camera here on the Galaxy M32. Don't get too excited though, because two of those lenses are a basic 2 megapixel macro lens and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Your primary shooter here on the M32 is a 64 megapixel megapixel effort though, so definitely respectable in terms of the megapixel count. Although by default you'll find that you get 16 megapixel shots uh, when you hit that shutter button uh, because it uses 4-in-1 pixel binning. You do have Samsung's usual scene analyzer slash optimizer smart as well, so as you can see down here, you can just suggest other uh, modes and settings that you might want to use when you're shooting a photo. So for instance, a bit of portrait action if you're shooting a human subject, human in inverted commas in the case of uh, Veronica, but she's real to me. You've got a variety of other modes you can swap between as well, including of course a good old food mode if you want to take a picture of your ham and cheese toasty before posting it up on Instagram. Uh, you got a night mode for those low light shots, macro mode of course using that 2 megapixel rear lens. And for pro controls as usual as well if you want to manually take over uh, the likes of the ISO levels, the white balance. And then the other alternative lens is an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter which just gives you a nice pulled back view of the action when you're trying to fit quite a lot into frame. And here's just a few test sample shots that I snapped around the homestead uh, while testing out the Galaxy M3. 32. As you can see, reasonably natural looking results as long as you're not trying to shoot into bright light or in particularly testing conditions. When you move indoors, things do get a bit softer and in low light the M32 does struggle. The night mode does help out a bit to brighten up the shop, you'll still get plenty of grain in there. And the ultra wide angle uh, lens definitely does a decent job as well, although don't expect the same natural looking colours uh, with that pulled out view. And if you want to shoot a good bit of home movie action, well just swap to the video, it's uh, stuck at full HD 30 frames per second by default, and as you can see there, there's absolutely no full HD 60 frames per second option or 4K, and I believe that's a limitation of the actual MediaTek chipset. But at least you can swap to that ultra wide angle lens and shoot video at again that full HD uh, resolution if you want to. And then uh, when it comes to the selfie snapper uh, up there in that little nipple notch, well it's a 20 megapixel effort. Uh, it should be fairly okay via sort of bog standard basic shareable shots. I wouldn't expect anything particularly special. Uh, you've got the standard view, otherwise the slightly pointless pulled back view, which makes bugger all difference really. You've also got the portrait mode option as well if you want to blur out the background, make it all about your mug. So that right there, in a nutshell, is the Samsung Galaxy M32, which as I say, you can grab from Amazon right now here in the UK for around 270 quid. And I've got to say, some aspects of it really, really good. Love that Super AMOLED display, absolutely stunning stuff. The audio chops are pretty good as well. You've got the headphone jack, you've got the expandable storage, all the specs you would expect. Unfortunately, when it comes to the performance, it is quite limited, so any gamers will definitely want to look elsewhere, uh, maybe upgrade slightly to the Poco F3, which can handle any title out there on pretty much maxed out settings. Uh, and of course, because you've got that MediaTek chipset, that also means the camera tech is somewhat limited as well. You can't shoot at 4K, for instance. Anyhow, I would say if you are looking for a, a new smartphone around that sort of uh, 200 to 300 pound price point, definitely check out my roundup of the best budget phones under 300 pounds that you can grab right now in 2021. That'll give you a 
few more ideas. And if you've got yourself a Galaxy M32, it'd be great to hear from you down in the comments below. Tell me exactly how you're finding it so far, if you find the performance a bit limited, or if you're struggling with the camera, or any other aspect of it, or if you just absolutely ruddy love it. Thanks for watching. For more on the latest greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.